A couple years ago, it was all over the news. Americans are having less sex. We're doomed. So is it actually true? Are people really having less sex? I'm Dr. Rena Malik, urologist and pelvic surgeon, and I'm going to answer just that. If you're new here, I make weekly content on urologic health, sexual health, bladder health, and so much more. Make sure if you like what you see, you subscribe and share this channel with your friends. This original study came out in 2017. It looked at a specific survey called the General Social Survey, which surveyed people frequently between 1999 and 2014. And they asked people, how often have you had sex in the last 12 months? They basically looked at these numbers by the number of times per year people were having sex. And they found that in 2002, for example, Americans were having sex about 64 times a year. However, in 2014, that declined to 53 times per year. So about nine times a year difference. And yes, that is a big number, but does that really make a huge difference in the big scheme of things? Well, I'm not sure. Specifically, what they found was that the people who were decreasing the most were people in their midlife who had school age children. And that makes sense, right? You've got children to take care of, you're working, and it can be exhausting to manage your household and also make time for intimacy for some people. And this was driven by two things. One was that people were less likely to have a steady partner. And two was that those that did have a steady partner was less likely to have sex with them. And so what the theory is behind this is that one, there's more options for entertainment than there were maybe in the early 2000s. We have the internet, we have social media, we have streaming TV platforms, which allows us to find other things to do rather than have sex or be too tired to have sex when we stayed up too late scrolling on our phones. Also, there has been a decline in happiness and increases in depression overall in society. And lastly, people are having children later. And so what that means is that by the time their children are school age and need a lot of dedicated time and energy to manage their school schedules, you're also a little bit older, which then taken together all can decrease the amount of sex that you're having. However, the biggest flaw with this study was the question they asked was, how many times are you having sex in the last 12 months? Well, a lot of people can interpret sex in different ways, and they may not include things like anal intercourse, oral intercourse as specifically having sex. After this, other studies in different parts of the world, including the UK, Germany, Japan, and Australia, all showed that the rates of sex were declining. However, interestingly, the Australia study showed that people were actually increasing their sexual repertoire, meaning they were using other things like sex toys or masturbation instead of having sex with other people. So a very recently published study tried to find out more about people's sexual behaviors. They not only looked at standard penetration vaginal intercourse. They also looked at oral, anal, solo, and partnered masturbation. They looked at results from the National Survey of Sexual Health and Behaviors. And this is a survey that is distributed over multiple time points across many, many different years. So they looked at the data from 2009 and 2018 in two different age groups. They looked at adolescents, meaning aged 14 to 17 versus adults 18 to 49. They essentially recruit people by sending them an invitation letter in the postal mail and then follow up with an internet-based survey. If they can't reach them, sometimes they'll also try by telephone to recruit people to participate. And the sample of people they got was actually representative of the general population, meaning that if you look at the proportion portions of people who participated, it's similar to the general U.S. population. All in all, there was about 1,600 adolescents and over 7,000 adults that completed the surveys. So in the adult population, 18 to 49, there was actually no difference in the rate of vaginal intercourse. It was about 24% in 2009 that reported not having penetrative intercourse in the last year versus 29% in 2018. People that fell into this category were most likely to have an income of less than $50,000, not have a college degree, and not be married. While we would think that these people are probably masturbating a lot more to compensate for the lack of sexual activity, they were also less likely to participate in masturbation. The number of times, again, did decrease. In 2009, they estimated about having sex on average about 63 times a year. In 2018, they went down to about 47 times. 
Fewer adults were participating in any partnered sexual behavior. However, changes in rates of masturbation did not occur. So the same proportion or amount of people are still masturbating, but they're less often doing things with a partner. What about the adolescents in the younger age group? This was a pretty significant drop. So in 2009, adolescents were having sex about 14 times a year. And now that's gone down to about four times a year in 2018. However, the more concerning finding in adolescents is when they looked at people who did no sexual behaviors at all, this number increased quite dramatically. In 2009, it went from about 28% to up to 44% in 2018. And that was just in men. In adolescent women, the number went from 49% in 2009 to 70% in 2018. So why are adolescents having less sex? There's a couple different reasons. One is that there's widespread use of internet, social media, and other sorts of electronic devices, which offer sexual experiences that may be outside of traditional partnered sex. Younger people are now identifying as multiple different sexual orientations or gender identities, and they may not view sex in the same way. There's also a theory that perhaps the amount of sex people were having in prior years was overestimated. So people kind of overinflated their survey responses back in 2009, where sex was a little bit more taboo and having more sex may have been considered more desirable as a characteristic than it is now. Lastly, there's also become an increasing focus on the negative consequences related to sex, unintended pregnancies, sexually transmitted infections, and just the emotional aspects of intercourse, which may serve as a warning to younger adults who tend to be a bit more risk averse than people of older generations. And lastly, there's economic reasons. So more and more people are having difficulties affording a place of their own in the younger generation, and they're more likely to maybe cohabitate with their parents. Obviously, when you're living with your parents, you're less likely to bring a partner home to have sex. However, the big thing here to think about is does less sex mean that they're dissatisfied? Not necessarily. So yes, people may be having less sex. Is that translating to lower birth rates or having a underpopulation? That's yet to be seen. However, we have seen in Japan, for example, where the rates of sex have very significantly declined that they are now seeing a very big boom in elderly people with a much smaller, younger working force to help take care of those older aging population. So it is something to think about. What do you think? Do you think this rate of sex declining is a good thing, a bad thing, or it really doesn't matter? Comment below. Let me know. As always, remember to take care of yourself because you're worth it.